Hey everybody, this is Calligraphy DK, and as you can probably tell by the title already, yes, this is the full tutorial on how to create a lettering brush in Procreate. Now, I'm going to be using Procreate version 4.2.5, which is the most up to date version currently available on the App Store. So don't freak out, and my settings page looks a little different than yours, but the majority of the features should still work the same way. So, without any further ado, let's open up the brush settings page and tap the plus icon to create a brand new lettering brush. For now, the name is going to be Lettering Brush for obvious reasons, but you can change that to whatever you like. And for the shape source, we are going to choose a custom image, which is also linked in the description down below. For the grain, I'm going to go for something that's already in the Procreate library. Let's see. Um, one of my favorites is this one, and it's called Bark. Oh, and if you want to know more about the shape and grain source, you can check out my other video where I explain it in more detail. So now that we've selected the shape and grain of our lettering brush, I'd say let's just try it out and see how it looks and see how it works. As you can see, it's definitely a nice brush by itself, and I'm sure there's going to be people who can make use of it, but it's not quite the brush we are looking for. So we're going to change that by again, opening up the settings page and working backwards. That means we're going from right to left instead of left to right, which I assume most people do, and I promise it's going to make more sense by the time you finish watching this tutorial. So that means the next section in order would be the general tab, here we can manipulate the brush properties, brush behavior, size limits, and opacity limits. In this section, thankfully, we don't have to change that much. Most of it is already perfectly fine for our lettering brush. Everything except for the size. It's currently set at 100%. I did notice earlier that it was a little bit too big for my taste. You still need to consider that it's going to get even bigger once you apply a little bit more pressure. And since we're talking about lettering, with all the downstrokes, pressure is absolutely going to be applied. So we're going to change the size to maybe around 50%. And of course, we're going to quickly test that out just to make sure how it looks, and it already feels a lot better in my opinion. Now moving on to the next section, we have the Apple Pencil settings, and the first thing we're immediately going to do is to set the pressure size to max. This is the setting that allows our brush to become pressure sensitive. In other words, this is by far one of the most important settings. Besides that, we can also play around with the tilt settings. I don't personally tell my pen when I do brush lettering on the iPad, but for the people who do, you can change the tilt size to max as well if you prefer that. But again, I'm not going to do that here because it sometimes messes up the stroke. Next, we have the dynamics, which you can see gives you the option to select between three modes, normal, glazed, and wet mix. And this is something I found is very dependent on the brush itself and what kind of look and feel you're going for. The one I found works best for my kind of style is glazed. So I'm going to select that for now. But if you're going for something like a watercolor brush, Wet makes this definitely the mode for you. Now next up we have the grain section where you can customize the texture of the grain in various ways so we can manipulate movement, scale, zoom, as well as the rotation of our grain and apply a filter afterwards to give the brush a certain look. And this is all basically preference and you just gotta test what works for you. But for this specific example, I'm going to set the movement to around 15%, the scale to 40%, and the zoom to about 8%. Rotation is going to be kept at zero. And lastly, I'm going to choose improve for the filter. And it looks about right. Starting to feel a lot like a lettering brush compared to the first version. Next, we have the shape settings. And the only thing I usually change here is azimuth. Not really sure how to pronounce that word. But this is also one of the more important ones as this allows the direction of the shape on the canvas to be the same as the direction of the Apple Pencil. So it behaves exactly like a real pen or a calligraphy nib. Rotation is going to remain static. And I don't want my shape direction to be random. So I'm going to keep it turned off for now. Shape filtering is improved just like our grain. And as you can see, we're almost done. Only one more step to go. Now finally, the last page is all about the stroke property and taper. And it's easily the one settings page I spend the majority of my time on. First setting is called spacing. As we increase the space, we can add more gaps in our brush. Streamline, pretty sure I wouldn't be able to do lettering without it. This basically stabilizes your stroke and allows you to have these really smooth lines. I'm sure you've seen in a lot of videos before. Jitter does exactly what the word describes. And lastly, fall off, reduces the length of the brush and makes it look like your brush is fading away. Again, great for something like a watercolor brush. The taper settings I don't really use for my lettering brushes, but if you're still curious about all these settings, I'm going to link an article down below that I've written where I explain everything in detail again, and even stuff that I didn't talk about, like these sliders, for example. So yeah, if you're interested, definitely make sure to check out the link in the description down below. So now that we've finished creating our very first lettering brush together, 
I'm going to give you guys a few more tips on how to take your brush even further. My advice for anyone starting out and who's just now getting into this whole Procreate lettering world is to experiment, have fun, and try different things in the settings. Again, the things we talked about in this video are really just the basics. You can do so many other things. For example, you can add lines to your shape to get these really nice textures. You can change the grain to blank to have no texture at all, which is especially great for vector-based work. Mess around with the size and opacity slider. The possibilities here are endless. And if you do happen to feel stuck at some point, one thing you can do is to download brushes from other people. That's what I personally did as well. And still continue to do. There is a bunch of free and cheap ones out there. And once you have them, you can change the settings however you like and create new ones that fit your unique style based on those new shapes. The one I use here is a brush from my shop where I also offer a variety of other different brushes. So if you're interested, link is also down below. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on how to create a lettering brush in Procreate. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I will make sure to reply as soon as possible. Or you can send me a DM on my Instagram as I'm also pretty active on there as well. Besides that, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video.